this work in rehearsals, did you ever find difficulty with improv Like, did you ever have days where you guys just could not come up with anything, or the ideas just weren't as um, fresh or on point? Um, okay, um, yes, there were days that we struggled. Honestly, when I started this process, I really struggled with it because there wasn't a script to go to where I could make up my character. It was free range. And so I feel like getting used to that was the big like hump in our process, you know. I think the, the first week was the hardest because like she said, we didn't have any script to look at characters or whatnot. So when our first scenes, we would improvise our first scenes, I didn't really know much about Violet and his relationship. I knew that we fought in the first scene, but we didn't understand where the tension was coming from. Or, uh, the past history. Yeah, or the, the past aggressiveness we had between each other. So then when the second scene came, and uh, you know, Tyler and I improvised, and uh, we just kept building the story and building the story, that when she saw our scene, because we got to present our scenes to each other <clears throat> at the end of each week, she realized uh, that our parents were dead. And then when I saw her scene, it was funny because she had said that our parents had died, and I was like, oh wow, huh. that's really funny. And so then we were trying to figure out how they died, and we both instantly agreed without even talking that they had died in a car accident. And I had said, okay, well, it's going to be my fault. And you're like, what? It's going to be your fault. It's going to be your fault. You know, you have to take all the blame. And so then we were like, oh, okay, well, maybe there's a situation where it could be both of our faults, and we both feel like it's that way. So when we were presented the scenes from each other, we learned a lot about our characters through what people said about us. So that's, at least for me, that's how I built my characters, through what everybody else had to say about me. I struggle more than anything with relationships with people, because we is the leader. So she doesn't necessarily have a super close relationship with anyone, we just have a different relationship with each other. Well, person. in the beginning, we didn't know you were the leader, right? Remember, like, we, uh, yeah. you struggled because they had sisters and people in love. Um, and, yeah. And, and they were secret, secret, love. love. secret lovers. And I was like, well, what am I? And then it just kind of was like, you have to be the leader. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, Someone I was there with Toby, so I had someone that you were, <laughs> I could love. <laughs> Sorry for all the sexual tension with her. She's channeling me. I chose to channel Teddy on 37 meters, so anytime I would like, Shane! I can see what you thought. I want to leave! I want to leave! I want to leave! As a director, when you when you're giving them a situation like you used to do an improv and then turning them loose, is that, I mean, I'm trying to understand how it began. So, so the audition process, uh, we uh, we did a few improv exercises, and then I sat one on one with uh, with with everyone, um, and then we did some Meisner work, which uh, basically is just two people standing looking at each other and like trying to dig into each other's souls, and you make an accusation and, like you're you're hurting, so the person has to repeat it, repeat back and forth, and you sort of build uh, this conversation. Uh, based off of a repeat. So, uh, when, I, when I heard, we sat around and we talked about some of the hardest situations that the actors themselves. Skeletons. And yeah, the skeletons and, you know, all the hidden stuff that people don't talk about. Well, in the audition, in the callback, we talked about it. Uh, and, I, and based off of what I heard in the audition, uh, uh, you know, there was a sister issue. So I figured there had to be sisters. So I sort of gave, sort of put a seed in each one of their heads, just sort of a character to start to go off of how, how, you, how these uh, six actors would mingle together as an improv troupe. Well, there has to be sisters, so you two are sisters, and, and uh, you know, there was the, uh, dealing with loss of love or, or you know, feeling 
love, so that had to be an issue. And then the, the homosexuality, so the how, how can we get those two stories together? Uh, um, actually, the one I gave you it evolved, because uh, your thing was just that, right, that you, that you got cast a lot as a man. Uh, and now that, uh, and, and you know, it, it, I, I sort of gave him just tiny little sparks to, to start brainstorming on. And then when we got together, uh, what really started to take form was when we had them in the Meisner exercises and face to face. And uh, they chose objectives. What, what do you need from this person in the scene? Well, I need, I need my sister to treat me like everyone else. So that's, so you say, I need you to treat me like everyone else. And your objective was, I need you to have confidence. I need you to have confidence. So they repeated those two lines back and forth. And based off of those two lines came that first scene with the sisters, with the book and, and uh, writing that. So it was very open-ended at first. Uh, well, it was also really inspirational in the fact that when we took that circle up and we all uh, divulged in each other's skeletons. And I mean, the, this is stuff that Besides these people, I'll, I'll never tell anyone in my entire life. It's just that stuff you put under your bed and never talk about. Under the rugs. And once everyone's stories were out, we had been bawling for at least two hours hearing everybody's stories. Uh, what was really cool about this process was we took those real life stories and put them into the play. We might have switched it. So my story might have gone to Sarah, or it might have been split between Maisha and uh, Shannon, but my story and her story and all of their stories are actually in the show. And you want to do their story justice because you know they're in the show with you. You know they're on the stage. And this is the hardest thing they ever had to go through. And so it was really uh, comforting and inspirational, I guess, on my part to know that I'm actually delivering someone's real life story right now. The audience won't know who it is. It yes, for instance, story. Sarah, I don't know. But uh, Sarah's mother passed away uh, some years ago. So uh, Sarah knows what it feels like to lose a parent, whereas Shannon and Alexis have no idea. But Sarah, who knows what it feels like, was the one saying that she couldn't possibly understand what that feels like and telling Shannon that she's violent, that she's so strong. So that there was a, uh, a sharing of the stories. No one, I mean, there were a few times when people were actually acting their own stories. Right, it was them. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's, it's a sharing. Uh, and they kind of told Timmy's story for some of not yeah. his huge struggle, but I know he's always struggled because he is the leader of the Improv Troop, with friendship and being a leader and how you have that fine balance. And so as Leah, I was able to talk to him about that and try to show that in the show that it's, it's a definite tough line to walk. And I got to look in those shoes and it's not. <laughs> so your seats keep together and a lot of you dialogue. We try and top ourselves every night. Yeah. That restaurant thing changes every yeah. night. The restaurant like scene changes every night. Yeah. For the past like two nights, we've never spilled anything on the floor. But the past two nights, something spilled on the floor, and we've had to figure out a way the to first it dress rehearsal. I spilled my entire drink on the table, and it ended up being one of our yeah, it was great. I like to think of it as a uh, you're painting. We know what picture we're painting. And we have a palette of, of colors that we know that we have to use on that picture. So each individual scene uh, is its own painting. And we know what colors we have to use. Just I've given them the freedom on, on which color yeah, paper. Which color, yeah. So so the stuff that works, we've sort of figured out, <clears throat> excuse me, by just doing it over and over again. So like uh, the, the the song where she comes in singing firework, that was that was that happened in the beginning of the scene. Uh, throughout the rehearsal process. And then they sort of forgot it one night. And then she came in singing it, and I, I figured it, worked, it just works better at the end of the scene like that. Uh, so it was a lot of play, and I, and I keep uh, encouraging them to continuously think of this as a rehearsal. Well, y'all are extremely talented. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I've done a lot of community here. And uh, I, I just, uh, each of you is very, very So as far as like the big issues, um, one of them that really like hit home for me was the molestation because uh, I've been personally molested 
and like I just thought that that was so interesting that you brought that up in a show like this because when I first watched it, I thought it was just gonna be a you know happy kind of comedy. Over. You know, if there was any issues, that was gonna be more like per like more uh, light. And then yeah, and so when that issue was brought up, like I was just seriously like uncomfortable. Like I just had to like shut myself out for a minute. But um, like watching it a second time uh, and just seeing how real and authentic and how true you were to the experience, it really kind of helped me in a sense of just like, okay, there is someone else who has been through this because it's not something that I talk about, but yet it's so common and happens to yeah. so many That's people. That's what we're talking about in our circles. People would yeah. say their story and then someone over there would start bawling and we were wondering why they were bawling it's because the exact same story had happened to them. It was like, damn, we need to tell this story. Oh, you want to talk about that moment on the show? Um, uh, when we were all just, we were just going over our scene and we've done the scene like three times before the molestation even came up. And then one night, it came out. And <clears throat> We decided, uh, Tim, Alexis, and I, that that was something that needed to be said. Because a lot of people don't understand homosexuality, and they don't understand what a lot of homosexuals have gone through. So we wanted to put that out. And my struggle as an actor was getting that story to come across as genuine, and not as something that Oh, we just want you guys to cry, so here it goes. Yeah. You know? And it was very hard for me because every night I'd be into it and it'd be real, but I would be I I wouldn't cry. Like tears wouldn't fall down my face. And I'd just be like, are people really gonna hear this story? Are people really gonna connect to the story? Or are they gonna be like, oh well, he's just he's just saying this? And then Tim told me, and um, it sticks with me every night that I do it, because it's a very uncomfortable scene, it's a very uncomfortable topic to talk about when there's an audience around you. And um, he told me, he said, don't let anyone judge your character and don't judge your character. And he had to tell me that a few times for me to actually <laughs> go with it, but that's just, it, it became, I became okay, with, I became comfortable, comfortable with being uncomfortable telling the story. And that's how it came out. And I'm glad that I touched someone because that's the reason why it's here. It's the reason why we do theater, yeah. yeah. It's, yes, exactly. Good question. I'm going to give you crap again. Okay, so. Okay, so. You're so sorry for having me. Woo!
judging other people by their service of parents or, or you know, judging a book by its cover because the hardest thing I've had to go through for the past two years here is people have this preconceived notion of who I am and automatically thinking I'm a bitch. And you know, that is my personality. I can't, I can't help it because of the stuff that's happened in my life. But the fact that I can make it through the play and have people support me and, and you know, are on my team for once, it's, it's really good to know that, you know, people took some time out to sit down and listen and uh, if it weren't for Tim, I don't know how else. Yeah. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a lot of questions. Um, okay, so I think the show definitely has like very strong potential to like be done in other theaters. Do you possibly, Tim? Do you possibly want to take this sh uh, show and workshop it in other areas? And if sh if so. How would you change it, and how would it Shut stay the same? I have two answers. I have two answers. My first answer is Mr. Brian Pope here. Yeah. With a huge support of our department yes. here, we're very thankful for him. Uh, he has been uh, for the past two weeks. He has been documenting the whole process uh, on 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 film. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's how that video, we, we made a lot of videos. Uh, yeah. And actually, he's, he started playing around with just watching uh, and, and writing down some of the best of the best lines that they've said. Because uh, a lot of the lines, I mean, I never, I never said, you have to say this. Uh, but I said, that's good. That's good. Uh, play with that. Play with that. Play with that. Uh, so, so naturally, the, the actors, the more you say it, the more you say it, the more you start to realize what you say, how you can say it to make it, communi you know, to communicate it better. So a lot of that, a lot of these lines are, uh, are really, have been consistent. So those are the lines that are going down in the script right now. Uh, but I don't, I don't know that I ever feel, would feel comfortable uh, with it just being its own show. I, I, I think what I'd like to do is take a work in progress and continue to, to just read. So like new off. characters, new yeah, stories. Based on the people who are involved uh, and get their stories and put them in a melting pot. And I, I don't know that I could ever do it again. <laughs> like this successful, I mean these are incredible people who for some reason trusted me the whole time. Um, <laughs> well, the whole time. Um, <laughs> It is something that I, I want to continue, um, definitely, for as long as it works, I guess. And when it doesn't work, I guess I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just have a comment, and I just want to say that this show was really inspirational to me, because um, for Shannon's character, I really connected when she would write things down in her journal, because there's always those things that you want to say, or you want to tell someone, but you just can't, and you just like write it down and put it off on something else. And like for you guys to be able to put what you have experienced that are like the hardest hardships you've ever gone through out on a stage is just really amazing to me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Does have a, uh, this is just so you know. So I noticed everyone was representing a certain color. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> two colors. Um, in the beginning of the show, I considered my character to be blue. Uh, just kind of there, maybe a little cold. And then uh, I feel like my character was all, was in a transition period. Um, so I felt that she went from being a blue person to being a red and more passionate and um, hardworking. So those what, are my two colors. What's interesting is uh, I the video out in the hall is sort of a compilation of it. Uh, I interviewed each one of their characters, and then I, I asked the actors the exact same questions. Um, and what was really incredible that I found out was everyone here is either playing someone they used to be or someone they wish they were. Um, each one of their answers were, I think I'm, I, I feel like I'm more like myself in high school, or I feel like I, I, I'm the person that I wish I, I could be. Um, so a lot of it is very personal, and a lot of the, the colors are, are based off of um, 
the actual actors. Everything from the pre-show music, each one of those songs in the pre-show represented a character that um, yeah, they chose a song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The colors were really, uh, they were really cool. They were like our mood rings. <laughs> um, when my character was first introduced, he was wearing like bright colors, like this shirt and the shirt he wore in the first scene with Journey. And then once the struggling with sexuality came, his colors got darker. And it just, it, it just reflected our moods. It was like, it's still our favorite color, but it's like, and now it's dark blue, you know? Now it's dark blue going into a purple. Oh, look, he's comfortable with himself again. Now it's light blue, you know? It was really cool to express ourselves in our colors. Like, it was really cool. Right. My, my color uh, I started out with, I had two colors as well, uh, was maroon. Maroon underneath. Um, and the reason I chose maroon was because uh, Scarlet comes off really harsh in the beginning, or very uh, aggressive, but it's all coming from a loving place because she's very uh, concerned and worried about her sister because nobody was there to raise her sister throughout high school and college, and now it's on her shoulders. And the color is, you know, based off of red, still for love, but it's darker because I'm stuck in this darker place right now in my life. And um, as the show goes on and Gideon helps me get through my inner turmoil with um, my past, uh, I start to lose the maroon and work my way into teal um, because it's a brighter color and it's a happier color. And uh, I just, for me, it uh, was almost like freedom, you know? Um, of course, I still wear it underneath because um, who you are today would be nothing without who you used to be in your history. So I always make sure I had Marie with me. But um, the colors def definitely help because as you're running downstairs and changing, that's almost like you're changing your skin. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're yeah. putting on new layers of your life. Um, my color was purple, obviously. And uh, it, it, when I looked up the, the purple bit and how it had something like mystery in it, and I just felt like my character, she just showed everyone what she thought they should see. She didn't show them really how she felt until she talked to him, to Gideon, and she told him, you know, kind of like, you know, how my life was. It wasn't always that easy. You know, I didn't have anybody to love and stuff like that. And that, I feel like that's when she actually showed them she truly was and they had their final scene together. And then at the end I wore this because it has orange in it too, which is a mixture of colors. And when I looked up orange, it had endurance in there and she was going to endure through this moment even though these things happened to her and then she now doesn't have to be mysterious and have to hold off who she is. She can show who she is to people. So. Uh, my color was yellow, notice. And uh, <coughs> yellow meant bold, determined, strong, just all the things I felt like Lee really was. Lee, he was talking about how it was either going to be work or want to be. Lee's the woman I completely want to be. Mm -hmm. Everything together, she's perfect, she's organized, and there are parts of me that are like that, but definitely not like her. She's perfect. Um, <laughs> and how lovely. Um, and, but I felt like throughout the show, and Having a nice scene, I had to learn how to relinquish a little bit of power and calm down. And so, in the final drum scene, I chose just for this shirt, which still has yellow in it, but it has other colors. And she's kind of learned to let go of some of her controlling ways. And <laughs> by the end, I think she's kind of, because she does, she finally does pass on the reins. And so, for the drum scene and stuff, I wanted to show the more fun side of me, so I chose not to be as. Yellow, bold, and calm down. <laughs> um, at the beginning of the show, I started off with um, black because it's kind of a nondescript background color. I feel like Violet didn't really know who she was or what she wanted um, at that point in her life. Um, and she was also in a pretty dark place. Um, and I've, I've had experience with that. My parents are still alive. I consider myself very lucky with all the things I have in my life. But I struggled a lot with being secure with myself 
And I feel like her transition, not just into, you know, the brighter red, um, and, you know, the bolder colors, it was the way she carried herself, the way, or the way that I tried to carry myself as Violet. Um, the way, you know, she was always, you know, more closed off and, you know, a little frumpier. Um, ah, shoot, I'm just ah, rambling today. Um, I know, I know. Um, but yeah, just, I wanted to show that, um, that transition into her finding who she is and not just that being comfortable with who she is and being proud to show the world. It was really important. Uh, it was really important to to me and really uh, every everyone in the cast that Violet in the end uh, came out on top. <clears throat> that Violet uh, went through this complete transformation. Uh, her character, I think, in the show has one of the biggest arcs uh, from start to finish. Just a completely different character. Uh, and. I mean, Shannon, look, Shannon is beautiful. Look at Shannon. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Shannon wears her hair down a lot, and she, you know, does, she doesn't come to school in a dress and makeup. Uh, so, this was something that, that Shannon also, we, we felt together that she needs to be in a red dress with beautiful makeup, her hair back. Uh, because oh, cause we, didn't, we didn't show you anything that wasn't already there. Uh, it's just that through Violet, uh, I was, I'm really hoping that to get Shannon to realize how wonderful she is and how beautiful she is. Um, and that's really my, was my hope with, with all of this. It's one big therapy, group therapy experiment with theater.